One important factor in determining the succession of animals in a grazing pattern is their nutritional needs. Dairy cows, for example, require high-quality forage to produce milk. As a result, they are often grazed first in a rotation, when the grass is at its most nutritious. The ideal height for dairy cows is between 3 to 6 inches. According to the University of Wisconsin Extension, allowing dairy cows to graze below 3 inches can result in reduced yields and lower quality forage, while allowing them to graze above 6 inches can lead to reduced intake and poor utilization of the forage. Beef cows, on the other hand, are less demanding in terms of nutritional requirements and can graze on slightly lower quality forage. They are often grazed after the dairy cows have moved on. It is generally recommended that the grass be between 4 to 8 inches tall. This allows the cattle to graze selectively, while leaving enough residual grass to promote regrowth and prevent soil erosion. For example, a study published in the Journal of Dairy Science found that dairy cows prefer to graze on shorter, more mature grasses, while beef cattle prefer taller, younger grasses. Small ruminants, such as sheep and goats, are next in the grazing pattern. They are able to graze on a wider range of forage types than cows, and their smaller size allows them to access areas of the pasture that cows may not be able to reach. Sheep and goats prefer shorter grasses, with an ideal height of between 2 to 4 inches. They are also more likely to graze closer to the ground than cattle, which can help control weeds and other unwanted vegetation. Many people know that sheep and goats are more browsers. That means they will forage on trees, bushes, and other types of forage than ground cover. This can be highly beneficial or negative depending on your context. For example, if you have sapling trees that you want to grow, these small ruminants can be detrimental. But if you have lots of invasive blackberry, poison ivy, or kudzu, small ruminants can be key to controlling your pasture. Poultry are often grazed after the small ruminants. They are particularly useful in controlling insect populations as they eat a wide range of insects and their larvae. Pigs, which are omnivores, can be grazed after the poultry. They are particularly useful in rooting up and breaking down the soil, which can help to prepare the pasture for the next grazing cycle. Furthermore, including pigs in the grazing pattern can have additional benefits. A study conducted by researchers at Gawa State University found that incorporating pigs into a rotational grazing system can improve soil quality by increasing soil organic matter and nutrient levels, and can also provide an additional source of income for farmers. It's very important to take into consideration the type of pig. Some pigs have long noses and are meant to turn deep amounts of soil, while others have short noses and root significantly less. It's important to consider your rainfall and available acreage before adding pigs into your rotational grazing system. An important consideration in a rotational grazing system is the wait time between grazing cycles. This allows time for any parasites that may be present in the manure of the previous group of animals to hatch and die off before the next group arrives. This is particularly important in preventing the spread of parasites, such as internal worms, which can be harmful to the health of the livestock. The length of the wait time will depend on a number of factors, including the type of parasite and the temperature and moisture conditions in the environment. A study conducted by the USDA found that the length of the wait time can vary depending on the type of parasite and the environmental conditions, but that waiting at least 21 to 30 days between grazing cycles can help to reduce parasite loads and improve animal health. Most practicing regenerative farmers recommend a minimum of 90 days before regrazing. There are several species of animals that can be combined into the same grazing rotation, each with their own unique benefits and grazing preferences. Here are some examples. Cattle and sheep. Cattle tend to graze on taller grasses and legumes, while sheep prefer shorter grasses and browse. Combining these two species can help ensure that all types of forage are being utilized effectively and none are being overgrazed. Additionally, sheep can help control weeds and brush that cattle may not be interested in grazing on. Sheep and goats. Both sheep and goats prefer shorter grasses and browse, making them a good match for grazing together. They also have similar nutritional requirements, which means that they can be managed together without the need for separate feed programs. Poultry and ruminants. Poultry, such as chickens and turkeys, can be raised on pasture alongside ruminants such as cattle, sheep, and goats.
Poultry can help control insects and other pests on the pasture, while ruminants can help break down manure and improve soil health. When combining species in a grazing rotation, it's important to consider their nutritional requirements, grazing preferences, and potential interactions. For example, cattle may be more aggressive towards smaller animals such as sheep and goats, so it may be necessary to manage them separately or introduce them gradually. There are pros and cons on both sides to integration vis keeping species separate. For example, combining species may cut down on labor needed to move rotations but increase the concern for the species potentially harming each other. Some other benefits of combining species are one type might provide predator protection such as cows can be a deterrent to animals who might prey on sheep or goats. Overall, the succession of animals in a grazing pattern is determined by their nutritional needs and their ability to access different types of forage. Properly managing the timing of grazing cycles and the wait time between cycles is essential for maintaining the health of the animals and the productivity of the pasture. By multi-species grazing, farmers can ensure that all types of forage are being utilized effectively and none are being overgrazed. This can also help prevent one type of forage from taking over the pasture. If one type of forage is particularly palatable to a certain animal species, that species may graze it heavily leading to reduced yields and poor regrowth. By introducing other species that prefer different types of forage, farmers can balance the grazing pressure across the pasture and promote a more diverse mix of forages. Multi-species grazing can also help control weeds and other unwanted vegetation. Different animal species may have different preferences for weeds, with some species preferring to graze on them while others avoid them. By introducing a mix of animal species, farmers can reduce the spread of weeds and other unwanted plants without relying on herbicides. As rightly admonished by Steve Kenyon, a renowned regenerative agriculture crusader, you have to be willing to walk your pastures and look at what's growing. Just because it's green doesn't mean it's good for the animals to eat. You have to know your plants and know what your animals need. Farmers should monitor the health and performance of their animals closely and adjust the grazing patterns and management practices as needed to address any issues that arise. This includes regular monitoring for parasites and other health issues, as well as adjusting the timing and duration of grazing cycles based on weather and other environmental factors. Thank you for spending time with us. Remember that on this channel, we share the latest industry news, research, and best practices for implementing regenerative farming practices. Kindly subscribe and press the bell notification icon to stay updated on exciting upcoming videos.